But this I want to talk about, which is a pretty cool little article courtesy of Resident Advisor. It's called The Art of DJing. This used to be my favorite articles and features they would do on Resident Advisor, where they would highlight um, DJs in the scene and essentially talk to them about their practice. Talk to them about how they approach DJing, um, how they approach playing, how they approach putting together sets and records and whatnot techniques tips tricks for someone like myself i fucking devoured this shit i love all of it i fucking love it and dj courtesy here has some very interesting points of view that i was absolutely laughing my head off at some of her opinions and views here because i feel like these are some of the things that you could only kind of get away with if you have some level of success i think in some regards but let's just hear some of our point of views in it because it kind of blew my mind the pictures on the article are fucking amazing she looks really great in these pictures they're really well done i feel like dj pictures and dealers in general are sometimes some of the worst dressed people on earth right you have to look at you know people like blau and what they're wearing day to day but legitimately djs look usually kind of horrible and um especially i feel like women djs if they're not dressed like fucking um you know go go girls or some shit they end up looking a bit weird if they're not dressed like kind of i beef a bottle girls they always look a bit strange in clothes but i feel like courtesy looks absolutely great here she styled really really well so one question here that really kind of blew my mind that made me kind of laugh was this one um, here's this question here um, is that the reason why sometimes you play tracks from start to finish without mixing the tracks together I know this has also been provoked some reactions online after your shows which we can talk about later but is that one of the reasons why you play full tracks now just to give you some kind of background this is an insane thing to do to play as a DJ and to play an entire record from the beginning to the end without mixing them especially nowadays especially when you play with some kind of time constraints is could be looked at as a bit lazy and could also be looked at as a lack of have as a having a lack of um technical skill which i don't think it is because if you look if you think back to the days of the paradise garage or studio 54 of the detroit scene back in the day djs that's how they actually used to play they used to actually used to sometimes play i think david mancuso is a good version of it he would have one turntable and he would play a record a tune off of a record and then take it off and then play another tune so there was no mixing it was about playing cool, interesting records. It was about having a good ambiance, a good scene, but it wasn't about the whole performance of a DJ, um, you know, uh, beat matching, mixing, channel switching, effects and shit. It was all just about, I'm going to program and sequence a list of songs that I like that are going to match the mood and they're going to take you on a journey in your nightlife. But nowadays... The fact that everybody's fucking hot hands behind the booth and they're playing records at kind of like two minutes at, at most to have the decision to be able to play the track from the beginning to the end is kind of brave. I'm not going to lie. It's legitimately hashtag brave to be willing to stand behind the booth and just let the whole track play from beginning to end, especially some of her more ambient type sounding records that Curtis has to play. They're really airy. There's a lot of space in between the notes and shit. That's, that, that seven minutes must feel long for the punters on the dance floor. It must feel worse if you're behind a booth. When you're playing behind the booth, one thing you will notice is that time kind of shrinks. You can sometimes get rushed into mixes because you feel like you're playing a track too long. So the fact that she plays them from beginning to end, I have to give the girl props. But her answer is fucking insane. Here's the answer. Yeah, because they really work. A lot of music I choose has beautiful, ambient beginnings and outros. I love the dynamics and energy it creates to let them play full in the club. These ambient parts are also useful for going between different genres and tempos without having to use a pitch so drastically. Um, there are also some songs that I play twice from beginning to end in a set. There are songs that I have the most requests for because people don't even know what I'm playing the song, same, the same song twice. They'll just be like, wow, that sounds amazing. This is also has pre um, precedence historically. This is kind of like the early tape mixing and early vinyl where you would hear some Donna Summer track play, being played on two record players or on tape players for a full half an hour. For a full half hour, sorry. People would go crazy, like really crazy. And I can definitely see that. There are certain songs that sound better second time you play it, right after you have just played it. I think that when there are elements in a song that you know you haven't been exposed to, your brain releases dopamine. It's a similar process of doing drugs. You can make some people feel like they are on drugs by playing a pop song every once in a while or playing a hardcore song that samples a pop song or samples a song from TV that shows like the Twin Peaks theme. 
It actually gives people physically pleasure, physical pleasure from the way that your brain works. And I use this a lot when I'm DJing. Number two, number one record, number one thing to talk about. This is privilege. To be able to play at venues that allow you the space to play records from beginning to end is a form of privilege. Because in my walk of life, in, my, in me being a working class DJ, playing in these fucking random bars and clubs, bro, if you don't play this right song for 30 seconds, you have somebody in your ear at the side of the fucking DJ booth asking you to play some Rihanna, asking you to play some fucking Beyonce. It's fucking annoying. So you're constantly having to battle between what you like, what the, what the fucking crowd likes, and creating a good ambience overall. So you don't have the privilege of playing some fucking Robert Glasper record for 10, 10 minutes. You can't do that. You have to play the hits. You have to play what makes sense. And you have to fucking get it going. That's what you have to get it going. Honestly. So she's got privilege in that regard. The second paragraph that she mentions here. About sometimes playing a pop record. In a fucking set. That's meant to be quote unquote techno. Or electro acid house. Can be quite euphoric. And kind of give you some sort of dopamine hit. I think she's right. People on the Burkine subreddit. Like to really really get on DJs who play like pop records in their DJ sets. I can think of Nini H being an example. I can think of um, Daria being an example. I forgot who it is. There's a few DJs out there who play at Bergheim who like to play that kind of like LSDX, XOXO is a good example recently, who don't mind playing the odd pop record. They'll play Beyonce. They'll play a Beyonce remix, Britney Spears remix, Katy Perry, Lady Gaga. And you'd be lying. If you've ever been to Bergheim, those songs, they absolutely tear the place apart. Why? Because typically in a place like Bergheim or those kind of nightclubs, everyone's playing really dark techno with no vocals, no melodies. It's all just boom, 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 boom. So when somebody from time to time plays something really light, really poppy, really cheesy, or even just a remix of it, right? Are you hearing a record that you've kind of known from your youth being sampled off of this kind of record? It fucking smashes it. People go crazy and they start singing along, hands in the air. It's such an incredible moment to see people go nuts over a record that they know, especially with vocals on the Bergheim dance floor, because for the most part, it's a bit of a no-no to play any kind of vocal records in Bergheim. Maybe Panorama Bar you do because it's more of a house and disco room, but Bergheim you don't. So I understand why some DJs will take that risk and be like, you know what, fuck it. Even though the heads, even though the chin strokers, even though the guys on the Reddit aren't going to like this, I'm going to go for it. And by, honestly, I've rarely seen people walk off the stage, walk away from the, you know, from the dance floor. Mostly they walk away if the set isn't going great or if the person isn't mixing correct, whatever. But I don't see them leaving because a Nelly Furtado remix came on. They actually go crazy for it. So she's got a really good point in this, but I think some people are way too um, up their own ass and a little bit too uh, hipstery to kind of accept it or to be honest and say, no, even though you may not like it, those records do absolutely tear the fucking paint off of the fucking walls where they definitely do play. So, um, you know, I'm a big fan of that. So she says here, I find songs really precious. I don't play tracks so much as songs. I think this is a very important in terms of style of mixing I do because I like to think, I think a lot of dance music is made to be mixed. Which is right. I think to it will be pretty d d tedious to hear a set, which I've heard many times, where people mix poorly. But I think the most annoying thing is people just playing annoying songs, which a lot of DJs do. You know the songs they, that you pick. It's not about choosing a style or anything. Particularly if it's anything that with emotions in it, I think it's an expression of your interest or your inner feelings. I think there are so many different expressions of DJing in the style of tracks you pick or the songs or whatever. For me, what I focus on is the songs practically, um, the songs that make me feel fuzzy inside without having to take drugs or get drunk, you know? And to be fair, I like this. I like this. I like this perspective. I like it because this is very different from regular DJs out there. And it's also incredibly brave because not many people can do this. Because it takes courage to literally stand behind the decks for seven minutes and let a track just play out and just vibe behind it and not be fiddling with the knobs and acting like you're doing something. It takes a lot of courage to play a record that you think a lot of people behind or at the back are going to be like look, making faces. It takes a lot of courage. So that definitely goes to show that she's very, very, um, she trusts her expression and trusts her taste level, which is fucking incredible to hear. So uh, we continue here. Another question I thought I'd like the answer to was this one. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? 
I think it's not. No, not Alan Heap. There we go. Here. So, um, this question. I'm curious about the different reactions to your DJ sets have provoked in the past. We chatted about the DMs you've received because you've played Missy Elliott at the Nash, Nashville Festival. But earlier, you mentioned how a punter came up to you in print works and shared how a previous set of yours helped him through depression. Can you tell me more about the good and bad interactions you've had from track selection and the style of DJing is provoked? Personally, for me, I think you are a real piece of shit if you're sending DJs DMs telling them you hated their set. It's okay if you're sending them DMs saying you liked it, but if you don't like it, keep your reviews to yourself or on your own platform, like I do with my reviews. My reviews and stuff, I keep it to the podcast, I leave it myself, but I'm not going under their comments telling them their shit or chasing them around the internet. I think that's really out of order and super cruel and not needed. If you actually feel good about it, of course, reach out to them. But if you feel bad and you don't like it, keep it yourself or write on your own platform. You don't need to go and DM the person and tell them they had a horrible set. That's fucking awful to do. Anyway, her answer. Yeah, it's funny because I never used to get hate mail, like ever. And I didn't used to get people commenting hate. I would never get negative DMs. And that might be because there was a lot, I was a lot less famous. But I think also I used to play a lot more by the rules. I was very in tune with the scene. I was very musically young, cool DJ, not playing business techno. That expression wasn't even a thing back then. So a young person playing not terrible music, basically. Playing whatever cool contemporary alternative dance records that was coming out. So essentially, the more of the culture you are the less likely you'll get you're, you're gonna get hate but then the more of the culture there are the less actually unique you are as an artist or as a dj your expression isn't that interesting because everybody is kind of playing the same tunes and you only have to look at certain djs instagram stories and shit which i do all the time and you'll notice a lot of djs across europe play the same fucking records the same pop records because they know it hits and it slaps on the dance floor but what actually shows true courage and true artistry and really separates you from the fucking you know general public is your ability to actually trust right to trust and believe your process and really 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 hold steady in it and do exactly what you feel like and what you feel like kind of describes you and kind of expresses you the best way possible that's real, real, real artist shit. I love it. It continues. Now that's very different because I'm mostly researching older vintage records as in 90s and 2000s. That's what I'm practically interested in. I also just realized that it's re very, really rarely that people are truly doing something new. Now she's kind of sounding a bit like, yeah, she's kind of getting in her bag, but she's sounding like her head's proper in the clouds. But I fuck with it. I love this energy because she's taking this shit really seriously and also saying, hey, I'm not like you motherfuckers. I may play in the same clubs as you guys. I may be in the same lineups as you guys, but I'm different gravy. I'm courtesy, all right? Speak to me now, so don't speak to me at all. It continues. Pra uh, practically in the kind of techno that's very popular right now. I j I'm just not that interested. I think that people that do really interesting things is not necessarily music I would DJ. There is no lack of good producers or DJs or composers within dance music. But the ones I'm interested in artistically do not necessarily make that kind of music our DJ. Which I think is true. And this is one of the things I've had as a really, as a kind of, as a, as a hurdle, I've kind of faced myself with music and with sometimes DJing. Sometimes I feel like my taste in the music I listen to, which is weird to say this, I feel like my taste of music that I listen to day to day is far more interesting and technically better than the stuff that I play. I feel like the stuff that I play is somewhat a bit one note, but the stuff that I listen to day to day is all over the place. I could be listening to metal one day, jazz the next day, pop the next day, UK rap, drill, like it's all over the shop. But I feel like that is a far more interesting range of music and tracks and records to listen to and artists to follow than the stuff that I like to DJ. Because it's all kind of the same. If it's a disco set, it's a disco set. If it's an electro set, it's electro. If it's techno, it's techno. If it's house, it's house. And it kind of just feels a little bit like, you know, after an hour or two, it's like, uh. But then I also remember the DJs that I liked that kind of challenged me and that kind of push, that I kind of looked up to when I was kind of getting into this shit. DJ Harvey, who's known for playing the most wack wackiest of records all over the place. Ricardo Villalobos, same sort of thing as well. Like him on Lumpin, divides opinion. Boris. 
another good example, divides opinion, like him or lump him. All these people approach their DJ sets like as like an opportunity to kind of show off and showcase their taste in music, as opposed to just playing the bait top 50, top 100 billboard tuned records they like, you know, a little bit, maybe. It continues here. I definitely think now I'm getting a lot more stronger reactions to what I do. Primarily, I get very cute love letters from wonderful, wonderful people and then the occasional hate mail. But to be honest, it's really mild. Primarily, it's people being angry that I would play non-techno or non-tech house or whatever it is that they think is appropriate within the culture or whatever, which again is fucking insane, man. If you're not doing your research on artists or DJs, especially because most of them have their fucking YouTube streams up on there, you're not searching or listening to mixes on SoundCloud and then you're going to sets, you're going to parties and then are getting annoyed that they're playing the songs that you don't like and then you're messaging them, you need to give your head a wobble. If you don't like something that you don't, you, you're hearing, leave the dance floor, go to the fucking toilets, have a bump, have a piss, take a shit, come back in later, go to the smoking area, whatever you must do. But one thing you don't do, don't message these people fucking hate mail. That's absolute R-worded. Like, l leave, it, leave it to your friends and family. Don't tell them. They don't give a fuck. It continues. Generally, different tracks and songs have different con connotations in different cities, scenes and cultures. A lot of people that think that the rules they have in their head are universal rules everyone agrees with when it comes to what is okay to play at Cub Night. I love these little flexes she's doing, man. I love it. She's kind of reminding everybody, look, I'm not like you guys. I play all over the world. I don't just mean I'm playing in like London and Paris and Madrid. Nah, no, I'm going to fucking Bogota, right? I'm going to fucking Peru. You know what I mean? I'm going to fucking Canada. I'm going to parts of Australia you haven't even been to. I love these little subtle things she's doing. Like, my passport is stamped up. Big up courtesy. She's fucking flexing hard here. Very, very subtly, but very flexing. Like, if you go to different cities around the world, you actually see it's actually different. It's not a universal language. Anyway, continue. Um, but what I experienced is that the track or the pop songs can be welcomed as a precious and love ode to the historical music moment in one city. And the same song considered trash in another. Some people seem to be more or less unaware of how much of the music they love and enjoy is influenced by and samples of music they seem not to want to hear. Yes! Amen, sister. A fucking men. That's the same thing that I kind of get with people. And again, this is a really strange time to go on because I'm not some BLM type of guy. I don't really fucking care about, you know, whatever that shit is all about. I'm not here ranting about white supremacy. But one thing that I kind of notice on scene one thing I've really noticed on the scene, there is a tendency in the scene, in dance music, of people saying they hate vocal records. They hate singing. They hate, like, you know, like some house will sample like a choir or like a or like an R&B singer or something else on the record or the melody, right? They fucking hate it. They hate vocals, especially when it's coming from like a black singer or like if it's a rap record that's been switched, you know, remixed to be like a techno record or whatever. And sometimes I look at it and I think to myself, is that like coded dog whistling? that you don't want black people on the fucking dance floor? Is that the coded, is that the message of it? That you get annoyed if like, I don't know, a DJ starts off a fucking set playing some random 50 cent record. People in the comments will be going crazy. This isn't techno. Why are you playing, you know, fucking um, 50 cent? This is bullshit. I'm like, bro, it's one record to start off the set. Let me get going first and then I'll start playing your dark shit later. I'm not doing it because I want to get the clear the dance floor. I'm doing it just to kind of reset the vibes and kind of start from a starting point. But they don't like that. And I wonder if there's a lot of it is a kind of weird coded message. So they want all the, essentially they want all the beats. They want all the bass lines, right? They want all the hi-hats, but they want none of the vocals, none of the really dis, um, none of the things that kind of really clock on that you see, oh, that's black influence. No, they want all the pair down, strip down nonsense of it. It's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. I don't know. I felt a little bit like that. I feel like, why are these guys so, like, I've seen it before at Berghain. I've seen people in Berghain shaking their heads if somebody plays a record that's got vocals on it. A vocal record. They hate the shaking their heads. Like, oh, corny, hacky, lame. It's like, hacky and lame. What's hacky and lame? Why? Why? Huh? Let's continue. I just don't think you can be interesting artists and not make an, anyone angry. Oh, I like this. I like this quote. I like this line. I just don't think you can be an interesting artist and not make someone angry. Very, very true. It's not like I can clean. It's not like I'm cleaning floors, but I'm definitely taking chances. And I'm playing some songs because I'm using DJing to research which songs I'll be producing covers of. 
That way I can test which songs are meaningful to other people as they are to me. No, you know what? She's you know what I like about this 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 interview? She's complaining, but she's not whinging. She's not whining. She's basically explaining her practice. Here's what I do, here's why I do it, here's why I don't like these certain things, here's why I do things my way. If you don't like it, it is what it is. But the, I don't get a sense of like her c complaining and whinging and crying like most people are. Like for instance, I've researched, I spoke about that L that DJ LSDXOXO. He got criticized by people that went to Bergheim because they didn't like he was playing all those pop records. And the first thing he did, oh, all these white cis, all these white cis males in Berlin hate me for playing Britney Spears. I'm thinking, hold on, hold on, hold on, bro. You're performing at Bergheim. It's basically founded... You know, it was basically made as a quote unquote safe space for the gay LGBTQ plus scene. The majority of people I'd imagine on that dance floor really going for it would be described as gay. They're not racist <laughs> because they don't like that you're playing a shitty Katy Perry edit. They just don't like the Katy Perry edit. But if you stand by it, stand by it. But he went immediately to the defense of, oh, they're racist, which was really in bad taste. But she's doing it like, look, the hate mail is what it is, but... I would prefer to be, like she's saying here, she wants to be an interesting artist. And if you're an interesting artist, she says, you, it's impossible not to make someone angry, which is really true. It continues. Obviously, the style of DJing, like choosing not to mix every song, can give people some pretty strong reactions. It's really interesting. For instance, I played in Paris recently, and it was one of the best gigs I've ever had in my life. And it was really surprising because there was someone who wrote to me and commented how I could play such a great party and not properly mix. And this was because I was playing the songs from beginning to end. And the room was on fire. Figuratively speaking, it's the kind of surprising that people don't see as a choice when I mix or if I don't mix. It's funny, isn't it? Like DJing is such... It, it might, as much as I love DJing, I'm still honest enough to say it's legitimately the lowest level of musical expression. Anybody can do it. The entry level is fucking on the floor. MIDI controllers are like 50 pounds these days. You can DJ off your fucking phone. You're playing other people's records. Other people have slaved in the fucking studio, have, you know, had faces full of fucking sweat, hairs turned grey, gone bored, divorced, families broken up, gone broke to make these records that you're playing in clubs, that you're just playing press and play with. But people get so precious with it. So precious. Play it this way, play it that way, play it this way, play it this way. When really, it's the lowest form of musical expression. But people get so up there and ask about it. So I actually like the fact that she takes these chances and is willing to go the opposite route by playing songs. All, and the only thing she's doing that's so like out of this world and it's getting people all hot and bothered is that she's playing the record from beginning to end. <laughs> So we, you've got two things. You've got a class of people who say, don't mix them too quick. Because I, I remember I used to get this reaction sometimes too to my mixes. Check out my mixes actually on my SoundCloud. I would get a reaction on my mixes that I mix the records too quickly. Like I don't spend enough time let the record breathe. But then on the other side of things, you've got somebody telling her, you're playing the record too long. <laughs> you can't win. I am definitely doing this on purpose. You, uh, you cannot like it which I like this quote, and that's fine. That's how it should be always. Please, it's the internet. It's social media. People are going to react, like I said, don't send anybody fucking hate mail that you don't like what they do. If you don't like what they do, vote with your feet. Don't go to their parties. Don't buy tickets. Don't listen to their music. But you don't need to go and send them DMs. That is, in my opinion, super R-worded. Leave them alone. If you want to make a comment like I do on your own platform, do so. But don't DM them. But also, you should be allowed to hate if you want to. But it should not affect the artists and what they're doing. They should be allowed to kind of create in a sort of inner vortex, essentially. Um, and I like how her perspective in it. You cannot like it, and that's fine. I personally find it very annoying when people put a ton of effects on everything because I think I, I think it can not always show an insecurity towards the music you play. Oh, I like this. And the insecurity of standing in front of people because, you know, as I'm saying, with the hot hands, I believe in the songs. I don't think... I do think they work. I trust my selections. Yo, man, this girl is fucking awesome. I love Kersey. Kersey's got, Kersey's fucking head is screwed on crooked. This makes a lot more sense why she's fucking as successful as she is now. Because she's basically a very rare, <laughs> a very rare case in like a DJ that's actually got a brain, that actually speaks really well, is very eloquent, has a point of view, 
is able to express that point of view behind the decks, on turntables, playing other people's music, and has created a fucking cult-like fan base around her. I think her sets, even the whole ones, are like approaching the millions of views. And you listen to some of the, the sets, it's like, it's not for me personally, but you're like, rah, people actually love this show. They love this girl. She's really carved a little lane, a little kind of avenue for herself with people that actually fuck with her super heavy. So I fucking love the interview. I love how she's kind of um, perspective on it and the pictures of the thing look crazy too. Yeah, the Hot Hands mix is actually amazing as well. Uh, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, big up her. You can listen to the whole, watch the whole thing. I won't read the whole entire interview here because I don't want to bore you guys to death. But there is courtesy there. Um, great pictures of the actual absolute interview. Big up Resident Advisor putting this together. They, they got someone who styled it. No, they don't have a person that styled it. But whoever did style her this day, or maybe she did it herself, did really well. The pictures came out really cool as well. Like I said before, DJs don't usually look cool in their little press shots and whatnot. But she looks really great here. And yeah, I'm loving it. Art of DJing featuring courtesy check it out on ra it's really cool and i really like her perspective on djing overall and i think i may actually try one day to actually do that to run through a set entirely and just do it with just the set the tunes playing from beginning to end and see what i'll go on see if i really kind of trust my process and shit let's see how that kind of runs i'm actually gonna try actually maybe my, my next mix i'll do it where i play all the records from beginning to end that's gonna be a fucking vibe i can't wait to get that started so yeah big up courtesy really cool interview she comes across fucking amazing and can't wait to see more from her as she evolves and develops as a dj 